In this short video, we're going to be talking about aluminium machining. Neil, many manufacturers offer these tools. What, what makes you that so much different? Well, Walter has used their long-standing history in automotive to develop into other industry segments. And we're proud to go to market under engineering competence. The engineering side of it being the design manufacture uh, of cutting tools and uh, the competence side of it is to get that cutting tool to work in its most efficient form for whatever the environment the customer presents to us. So he's not left alone to, to have that tool running as he sees it. We're going to try and make it the most efficient it can be for that environment. I think that's key, isn't it? Tools, of course, very important, but equally the people within the business. Yes, we've, um, we've got uh, strong knowledge. And with that, we've segmented people. We've put them into sp specific areas, uh, going away from just the industry segment. We've gone right into the component side of things. So we've got specialists in uh, titanium structures. We've got people in aluminium structure parts. And, uh, and it goes on. Yeah, so you've got a broad range of aluminium. What, yeah, what does it look like, the range as a whole? What do you offer? Well, right across Walter's range of tooling, we've got uh, competence brands. And uh, obviously, we, through... Uh, some time ago, we've had some companies come together. Um, the prototype brand stands for itself. Titex came into Walter. So now we use these as competence brands. So we've got Walter that looks after the indexable and then in aluminium, the PCD tooling. We've got uh, Walter Titex, which is a solid car by drilling side of things. And then we have uh, prototype. Walter prototype is a brand and that is our threading tools and solid milling tools. A lot of your R&D goes into aluminium machining. Why, why do you think that is? Uh, it's a, an expanding market and there's a high expectation from that market. So uh, again, we're already involved uh, from the automotive side of things. Uh, we've been in aerospace a little while now. And it's been a rapid development. And of course, you've got to service that market. It's a large market. as a big expectation. They always want to do things better. So you've got to continually improve. And then we've got our eye on the future as well with uh, electrification, new technologies like additive. So we're looking at really the landscape as well. So what's going to be required for electrification for all the aluminium parts that will replace legacy automotive parts. Mm -hmm. And then uh, with additive, it changes again because there's uh, really uh, no emphasis on rough uh, machining. It's all finishing applications. For sure. So this is a good example, isn't it? This is a fairly typical uh, aluminium <clears throat> component. So is this done using some of the tools on the table? It is, yeah. What we're, what we're looking at here is just a, a, a snapshot, really, of the range. But it's, uh, this has all been done with industry collaboration. So with the tooling development, we, we take it to, uh, or we work with partners in the machine tool industry. Their, play, their machine tools are at the highest level platform. And uh, it's an understanding that if we can get the tools to work stably and correctly on those types of machines, as we come down to sort of lower platform machines, they're going to be stable. That way we can utilize the machine to its maximum and give the best efficiency. So when we're looking at the uh, M2331 here, the indexable, um, we're looking at something that's uh, on a 50 diameter proved to be the most efficient in its range. And we're looking there to utilize the maximum amount of power that's available on the machine and create the highest metal removal rate from it. And as we come down then to the, uh, to the uh, smaller solid carbide cut, as we follow that pattern and then once we've developed that side of it, it gets to a point where you can't go any further because mm -hmm. the machine tool will not allow you to go any further. So we start then looking at some of the finer parts of it. So here, deep wall machining. This is a two millimeter thick wall, 50 millimeters deep, and it's finished uh, with a one pass strategy with uh, a 12 millimeter diameter cutter. So mm -hmm. it's quite demanding on the tool. There's a lot of deflection comes into the tools. And then once you get down in cross section, that, that uh, deflection passes into the uh, the part itself. So we have to combat that with a bit of design mm -hmm. and a bit of toolpath strategy. For sure. So Walter Tools, very, in, you know, very dynamic, bring a lot of new products to market. How do you continue to do this? Um, it's just a requirement, really. You know, certain things uh, get to the maximum and then you have to leave it alone and, and you work on mm -hmm. the next process. So it's a, it's, it rolls on. Um, but everything's fairly modern. Uh, it's the emphasis we've put on it. As I say, we're guided by our, uh, the people we collaborate with. And sometimes that brings ideas closer to, closer to home a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. So we're able to adapt to that market. And obviously, it helps us have a longer term view on the market as well. 
You've mentioned automotive, you mentioned aerospace, both heavily require special bespoke tools, don't they? Well, to have the Express, can you, can you tell us a little more about this? Yes, um, well, Walter's a very modern manufacturing company and uh, Walter Express was brought in because uh, there's a lot of tools that uh, require a very small change that's not in the standard program. So it might be something like a changing corner radius on the corner of a cutter, a drill chamfer tool. So the specials is a bit of a concern in the industry for people because of lead time and managing that situation. So we have Walter Express and what that does, it automates the system. Because it's a simple change, it fits within a small window of uh, variables. People are allowed to sort of spec the tool themselves. The offer returns in about an hour with a drawing. And then four weeks later, the tools will arrive. So it's a very quick turnaround because it goes into that automated process and that cuts the time out of it. Manufacturing time is the same, but it's actually the processing of the tool that's uh, reduced. So it's a very efficient, quick service. Mm. Interesting. So for people watching at home, aluminium machinists, regardless of the sector, how do they learn more? How can they find out more information? Well, we have a lot of uh, deep set information. Um, so we can supply the strategy information for people. Uh, the website holds a lot of information. There's a lot of videos out on YouTube on this subject. And uh, of course, they can con contact Walter directly and uh, we'll respond accordingly. There we are, Neil, fantastic. It's been, a, it's been, a, been an education. Many thanks and thank you for watching at home.